Welcome back to the channel. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to record a beat on the MPC key 37. Now this is going to be kind of a two part video. In this video, we're going to cover making the beat itself. And then in the next video, we'll talk about turning that beat into a song using the song mode on the MPC key 37 and creating different versions of our beat to then stitch together into a song. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned because that one will be coming next. But in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of creating a beat. And we're going to talk about some of the fundamentals behind how to record in the MPC key 37. And I'll try to give you some tips and tricks along the way. And this is my workflow for recording. Yours might be a little bit different. So there's a little bit of personal preference here, but hopefully this gives you the fundamentals that you need to get started. So over here on the MPC key 37, the first thing we're going to do is turn the keyboard on, of course, and then we're going to open an empty project. This is just going to open up an empty project. If we come over to our track main screen here, this is kind of where we're going to live throughout a lot of this video. Let's cover just a couple of really basics before we jump into recording. So three things I want to cover first. One, there's two main ways we can record in the MPC key 37. One is loop recording or beat recording where we set the amount of bars and then it just loops through those bars and we can add tracks and record. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. The other way that we can do this is increase our bars to the point where we can record a full song without looping. That's more like linear recording. I'll cover that in a different video. But that's where you might record a whole track to the song and then do the next track and do the whole thing at once rather than creating a beat that we stitch together into a song. So that's the second way we're going to be focusing on loop recording in this video. So that's number one. Number two, let's just look at the control surface here and cover a couple of basics. So we can modify parameters by tapping on the field on the screen. We can double tap on the screen to come into a more detailed view and sometimes it gives us a number pad, sometimes it gives us the ability to modify, let's say the insert effects or things like that. Or we can scroll with our big encoder here to increase or decrease the value. Or we can tap down on the encoder to get to that same place as when we double tapped. So a little bit of navigational stuff there. There's the transport controls right here. Record is going to record and replace any notes you have on the track. Overdub is going to record, but it's not going to replace notes unless you play those same notes again. Otherwise, it's going to keep the notes you already had recorded and add to it. Stop, of course, stops, play, plays, and play start starts at the very beginning of our beat. Now, you'll notice as we get into record that I'm usually going to start with record and play start, which is going to start me at the beginning. And as soon as we loop back around, it automatically is going to switch to overdub. And there's a little LED light over each of these. You can see which one is active at that time. And then the last thing I wanted to cover here is you'll notice the labels on the buttons. There's usually labels above and then labels below. To access the function that's labeled below, we hold shift and then we press on that corresponding button to access the function below that. So if we're going to go into, let's say, our track view instead of this main view, we can hold shift and that jumps us to our track view. You can get between these here as well. If we wanted to go to grid, we can tap on this or we can tap on this grid button. And then we can always come back home by tapping home or tapping on this main button here. These are very handy because they allow us to access some of the most common functions right here underneath the screen. So really cool. So that is number two. And then number three, let's just debrief really quickly on the difference between a project, a sequence, a track, and a program. So think of your project as your whole song. We're building everything inside what's going to be a project. And then within the project, we can have multiple sequences. Now think of sequences as if you laid everything out linear, your whole song out linear, and then you chopped up that song into an intro, verse one, verse two, chorus, each of those might be a sequence. Now within the sequences, they all share the same tracks. So again, think of it linearly. Let's say we've got eight tracks in our song and we chop those up into the verse, chorus, etc. Those tracks are shared across all your sequences, but the tracks themselves within a sequence may have different notes 
they may be muted or unmuted. So the sequence allows us to kind of block out our song. And we're gonna be in one sequence here, we're gonna record the, you know, the fullest version of a beat that we can. So in the next video, when we compile a song, we can strip that back for our other sequences that we're gonna have, like the intro and the verse and things like that. Now, in order for you to hear the notes on a track, you need to have either a plugin program or a drum program or something like that associated to that track. So if we look on the screen here, this is the whole project. Then we have the sequence that we're in. Then we have the track within that sequence. And then we have the, I guess, the source of the sound for that track down here. Now you're allowed to have eight plugin programs and you can associate those to one or more tracks. So again, plugin program or drum program, we have different track types that we can select. So we could select drum to get our drum programs and plugin to get our plugin programs, but those are associated to track. So project, sequence, you can have many sequences. The sequences all share many tracks, and then those tracks are associated to a plugin of some sort to be able to hear the notes that are on the track. So we got that stuff out of the way. Hopefully that didn't bore you too much, but I'm telling you all of that as if you're a beginner, you're just learning to use the MPC. And so hopefully that's helpful in getting you up and running to learn the fundamentals before we jump in and have some fun. So let's do that now. Let's set up our sequence. So first let's pick a tempo and we can do this by tapping the tempo here. We can go in and we can scroll to choose a tempo or we can double tap or push down on the encoder. Let's go with a tempo of 96 and then there's a little do it button. So now we've got 96. The other thing I wanna just kind of look at here is the metronome. So hold shift and tap on the metronome to get to the configuration piece. I wanna enable this for now on record and play. And I'm gonna bring my volume of that metronome down just so I can hear it a little bit. It keeps me kind of in time. And we could change the sound of that right here. So we could come in, I'm gonna leave it on MPC click. Now we could just hit play. You can hear the metronomes just there, kind of giving us a little tick to keep us in time. The other thing I'm gonna do is increase my bars to eight. Now this is how many bars it's gonna go before it loops back around. So we wanna do eight bars as part of this song. The shorter your number of bars, the less variety you're gonna be able to get in that beat. So I feel like eight gives me enough kind of variety before it loops back around. And it gives me more when I go to create the song, stitch these together. So we'll go with eight, that way we have a nice full sequence. So now that we've set up our sequence, we've got 96 beats per minute, eight bars, and we've got our metronome turned on. The other thing to keep in mind here is this TC button, which is the timing correct functionality. What this is gonna do is quantize or timing correct the notes I'm playing within the time division I have set here. So I'm gonna stick with 1 16th. Where this really gets a little messy is if you're, let's say you're playing a piano track and you've got notes that aren't necessarily all in time, it's gonna try to put those in time, which could sound messy. So sometimes you'll see me turn timing correct off when I'm recording a specific track, and then we'll turn it on for other things like drums. Now, there's a couple of ways we could approach this. We could record the drums first, the bass first. I like to kind of get some sort of hook, and I'm gonna be upfront in this, and I have not done any preparation or planning. I have no clue what beat we're gonna record. So we're gonna do this all on the fly. I like to kind of use the sounds to inspire me, and we're just gonna kind of play around with some different sounds here to come up with a hook to our song, a little bit of um, maybe some rhythm or riff that we can then build our beat off of. So again, no idea what this is named or what this song is even. So we're gonna do this together and hopefully it's not a complete disaster. So let's come in here and we've got our track one right here and we have plugin program one assigned to that. So we're gonna start off with something that we can get a riff on. So the way that we can change the sound, we can just tap on here and come over to our sounds. And these are all of our plugins that we have available for us. Hype has a ton of great synth type sounds, pads, things like that. So you can click through these, the different pages of sounds that there are. It's kind of a cool one. So I usually kind of just click around on a few of these. Another plugin that I've really been loving the sounds on is the Mini D. It's got a great number of sounds in here.
I kind of like that. It's got a bit of a, an F, and then a G. Let's try recording that. I'm gonna come back to my main view so we can see what's happening here. There's a little white line up here and that shows us where we are within our track. So when I press record and then play start, it's gonna start me at the beginning and it's gonna give me a four beat count in on my song here. So we're gonna just, we're gonna try this out together. And you'll notice it looped and automatically changed to overdub. Just gonna listen to that to the end and make sure with that riff that we're happy with the way the timing correct is on that. I like that. So let's go ahead and name this pluck pad. And I clicked on the wrong thing, but this little A with the cursor, we're gonna say pluck pad, do it. And we're gonna call our plugin program that as well, Pluck Pad. So again, to name your track and your plugin program, where this is helpful is if we come over to, let's say our track mute view, this is showing us right here our track name, Pluck Pad, really helpful. If we come over to our mix view, we see that here as well on our plugin program. So very helpful to have these named, both of these, so that no matter where you are in your track mute or your mix, you're able to quickly see, okay, this is the track and this is the adjustment I'm making to it. So I like that one. One thing that we could do, and we're not gonna do it in this video because it would just take too much time. We'll do it in the next one, is the insert effect. So if we tap this little eye right here, this brings for this track, it expands our little view here. We can add insert effects by tapping in this effects block here. You can add four insert effects per track. Really handy, and we're gonna actually do that once we put the song together, and we'll talk about some of the mute solo and the insert effects there. So I'm gonna come back to that. We're gonna click on this little hide icon right here, and let's go to our track two. Now that I have a bit of that riff, I like to go to bass next. Some people like to do drums. I'm gonna go with a bit of a bass sound, and I think I want something that's maybe a little punchy. We've already got this pluck that's a little kind of punchy here. We're gonna to start to build some rhythm into this track. So on our plugin program, we're gonna move over and you'll notice that we only have the one plugin program here. So to add a second one, we're gonna tap on that and now we can define a different sound source for track two rather than using plugin program one, which is our pluck pad. So I'm gonna come over to sounds and we could choose a bass from, we've got a really nice bass line plug-in right here. And let's see what we've got for categories. Let's see what is in basic. We've got some of these. Not feeling those, how about percussive? Want well, something that's gonna hold a little bit. I like that one a lot. Uh, let's try some different thump ones. And we can use these octave up and down so I'm not playing way down here. Let's try that. I feel like that might get us where we're trying to go. I forgot our little riff. So I messed up. So what I can do is I can either stop it and then just do record, play, start, and it's gonna record over what I did before. My other option is to tap undo and that's gonna undo what I just played. So if we come over to grid, I can show these are the bass notes I played, undo. It got rid of my grid notes there. So uh, maybe let's listen to this a little bit. I'm not digging this bass sound. You're probably not either. So let's come back over here and let's do, I don't know, maybe we 
maybe we have to go somewhere different. Let's try hype and see what we have for bass sounds in hype. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Bass, 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 bass. might do it. I like that. On the timing correct, I'm going to turn this off because I'm going to do something a little funky with this. So let's just turn that off for this track. Play start. forgot I went to the E minor there. Again, I could undo, but I'm just going to go record, play start, and overdo what we did before. Perfect. I think that's good. Let's name this base. Now we've got some movement with our pluck pad. We have the base there. Let's come over to track three. So we're going to scroll over here. And I'll be honest, you can do this while you're recording. And let's do this with track three and four. I'll show you how you can do this live. So we could have set up all our tracks with our different sounds and then just recorded played as soon as it started looping, jump to the next track, continue to record. So I'll do that with three and four. Let's get these set up and I'll kind of show you how you can do this live all while it's recording. So on track three, we've got to hit plugin program plus to get a third plugin program. Let's come into, let's do hype again and let's go into, do, 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 let's do hard plucks. So we'll go with this for track three and on track four, let's do a plus and let's find something that we can get some movement in here. I'm hoping. That'll work. That'll kind of help us fill in a little bit. So those are our two tracks and we're going to record these. can do now is you'll notice it went to overdub. I can move in and out of overdub by just tapping this. So I'm going to leave it on overdub. We're going to move to track four. Now watch my playhead here. When that comes around, I'm going to come off overdub. Yep.
So there we go. Let's go in and name those. Just a quick little example of how you can do that. We could have moved to track five, added a plugin program, picked a sound, undubbed it, played a little, made sure it worked, overdub, and keep recording. So you can do this pretty quickly uh, to get an idea out, as you can see. So this one we're gonna call, we're just gonna call this a regular pluck and regular pluck here. And then this one, we're just gonna call this synth pad. Now I think what we need to do here is get ourselves some drums in here. Because we've got four tracks now with pluck pad, bass, pluck, synth pad. So on our track five, we're gonna change this over to a drum track. We can do that with this little icon here. And now you'll notice if I come into my sounds, I've got a different view here because it's pulling up drum programs instead of plugin programs. So we've got a whole bunch of included kits here. We could tap on these and load them into our project, but one thing that I like to do is X out of here, just come back to my main view here, and click on the Assign Samples button right here in the Drum Program section. You'll see there's nothing assigned here, but if we tap on Browse, and then under Audition, we can set this up to Auto Audition. And then as we move through, Ooh, I kind of like this one. It's got a bit of that slow vibe to it. You can tap on the play button there to stop the audition feature. And then tap on load, and that's gonna load it up into those 16 pads. I've got that right here. If I go octave up and make sure my transpose is off. So these could be, these drum programs could be a combination of drum sounds. I like that. We could probably use that and then. And I'll probably keep this. Let's do a little play and just kind of see how this fits. I like that. So let's go ahead and record this. I'm gonna name it now. We'll call this drums. And I'm gonna leave my plugin drum program name the same so I know what drum program this came from. And then let's just go record. And you'll notice if we play start, we're missing a little bit on that synth sound. So if we come into our grid view, you'll notice we're missing a note right at the beginning here that, what note did we actually play there? I think we want this note here. So let's just do um, overdub, play start. Undo that. I'm going to try that one more time. I like that. That sounds about right. So we can use this view. I won't go into detail on, you know, much of this right now, but you can see we have the ability to edit the actual notes we recorded. So now that we've fixed that, let's come back over to our drums. Now, one thing we could do is overdub and do our cymbals. But what I like to do is throw those on another track so I can treat them differently with my effects. So let's do that. Track six, we're gonna leave the drum program the same on this. That way all the sounds are the same, we're just putting it on a different track so we can treat it separately and have those notes split out separately. So we're gonna do record, and before we overdub, we're gonna to go to TC, and we're gonna make sure that's on. That way it fixes any of my bad timing there. So let's close this and let's play start.
sounds pretty good for starting with nothing. <laughs> so let's go into name this. Um, we're going to just call this symbol. That way we've got drums here, symbols here. Let's come over here. I feel like we need an electric piano or something. So I'm going to change this back to a plugin program, tap new. And let's go into, uh, let's go into electric here. And let's find something that's <laughs> wet. I like that. It's it's definitely wet. Maybe a little bit too much. So one thing we can do here is we can go into edit instrument and we can tweak things. So you notice a bunch of effects on here. Let's come over to the delay. I'm going to take my feedback on that down. And time down. We're going to come over to our spring reverb and we're going to take the time down on that. It's a bit better. So those edits we're making to our plugin program. Now keep in mind if we use this electric piano on multiple tracks, what we did here would affect all of those tracks. So let's just call this one EP and then we'll go ahead and record this. And then last thing we'll do is record maybe a lead sound to give us a bit of a melody. Not sure what that melody is here, but let's go ahead and record this. It's getting lost a little bit there. I think what we're going to do is come back over to our synth pad and let's just grab, you can slide this fader down or we can grab it here. Yeah, let's go back to our EP. And let's bring our volume up on that a little bit. And I'm going to do record, play start to record over what I did before. not digging it super much. Let me see if I can find a little bit of a better bass sound there. Let's come into here. Let's just, you can change the sound and then keep the notes. I feel like that's better. It's a little more subtle. So that's the nice thing is you can come back to any one of your tracks, change the sound and the notes you played and recorded will use that new sound. So really nice. We could come in and do tweaks to that sound and stuff as well. Let's come over to track eight, plugin program six, and let's go in and grab a lead sound. Maybe we do a lead sound from the mini D. <laughs> And let's just play around with this. I'm going to turn timing correct off before we record. That's better.
came out way better. Sorry, that just kind of like took me back. That is amazing. So let's come in here, let's call this lead. And honestly, as I'm listening to this, I feel like we need a little bit more of a rhythmic sound somewhere in there. But before we do that, let's go ahead and save this program because we haven't actually saved it yet and I don't wanna lose what we have here. So we're gonna call this beat demo. Boo, boo, boo. Actually, let's give it a fun name. What does this sound like? It sounds like, let's call it wet rain. You know what that means. Let's go in and do it and save. So now anytime we make changes and we wanna save, we can just tap on that save, boom, it saves it right to our memory. And we could have an SD card as well, could have saved it to that, um, it's probably best practice, but here we go. One more track here, let's go in plugin program and let's find something that can give us a bit more of a percussive sound here. we can do a bit of an arpeggiated I like that <laughs> my timing's off there let's try this again that one more time because I feel like that wasn't perfect. That's pretty good. Let's name this. I don't even know what we call this. Um, pluck. Uh, it's not even a pluck. What was this? It was, um, we'll call it pure pop. I like that. Now we could go in, let's just try adding one more here because I have this sound in my head. It's not a bell, but it's Definitely not the sound, but. I think that'll do it. So let's come over here. I'm gonna do high for the first four and then do an octave.
I think that'll do for a beat. Let's save this. And I've got a little hair on my screen. So come over to our mix view we've got here. We could come up to the top here and we could change this to MIDI tracks. And that's going to show us our track names rather than the programs. That way, when we're mixing, we're mixing to the track, not to the plugin program. Because keep in mind, if we had mixed the drums on the programs, it would have mixed the cymbals and the drums together. Whereas on the track, we can adjust the actual track level here by changing to MIDI tracks. Audio tracks, same thing there. Um, we could switch between those. So we've got you know all of our different tracks here. We've got 10 tracks in total, and I don't know why we didn't name maybe track 10. We didn't do anything with. Okay. Um, oh, we did. Let's call that shiny. Shiny, so shiny. And I think this is going to about do it for this video. Come back into mix view. There, now we've got shiny. So when we play this, we can see, tap on any one of these, and we can grab the volume, or we can just pretty cool stuff. In the next video, I'm going to be taking this beat we've created, and we're going to use song mode, which is over here in our menu and song, and we're going to build out a song using sequences. So we're going to duplicate this sequence, we're going to create variations of it, and then we're going to stitch those together into a song. And then I'll show you how you could maybe then record another track over the entire song rather than inside a beat. So pretty cool stuff. Be on the lookout for that. I hope this video was helpful for you in just kind of seeing the workflow and getting started of recording on the APC Key 37. If you've got any questions, throw those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Stay inspired and keep making that music.